Now I want to talk to you for a minute about Ruth. There's a book of Ruth in the Bible. It's well worth reading. And Ruth's husband, her father-in-law, and her brother-in-law were all killed in a battle. Now Ruth was from another land other than where she was at right now. She was not a believer in Jehovah God. Her mother-in-law now had no husband. Both of her sons were dead. And she was going to go back to her home country. She was a believer in the one true God. So she told her daughter-in-laws, both of you just need to go back home because I'm not going to have any more sons and, you know, I don't really have anything for you. I don't have any money. I don't have any. Well, the one daughter-in-law did, but Ruth said, I will not leave you. Where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. I will not leave you. How many people will choose difficulty just to prove themselves faithful to somebody. You know, the Bible says that Moses was faithful in all of the household of God. God is faithful. Jesus was our faithful high priest. And faithfulness is something that we need to talk about a little bit more, I think. I think we all know that we live in a world today where people don't, aren't really very good at keeping their word. They don't keep appointments. They don't call to say why they can't come or if they're not coming. People are late all the time. I guess just to say it and get it over with, I mean, we got to be very careful that we don't get sloppy with the rest of the world and not be the kind of people that God wants us to be. And I don't care if you're the only person you know that's doing, what right, doing, that's doing what's right. If you keep doing what's right, let me tell you something, you are going to be the one who's going to get a reward. So Ruth made a decision that was different than her other sister-in-law, but she did the right thing. Now, they got to the place where they were going, and there was a wealthy man there named Boaz. Actually, he was the wealthiest man in the country, and he was some kind of a relative of Naomi, who was Ruth's mother-in-law. And so, I'm going to start reading here in Ruth 2, verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter... Do not go glean in another field or leave this one, but stay here close by my maidens. Now, the gleaning thing we might not understand unless I explain it. So God always made sure that he took care of the poor back then. There were actually laws and rules about the way the poor had to be taken care of. And every person who had a crop and had a field that, where crops came up and they were successful, by law, they had to leave they couldn't reap the harvest from the corners of the field. They had to leave that there for the poor. And so when the workers would be done for the day, then the poor people would come in and they would glean in those fields and that's what they would have for their food. So Boaz said to Ruth, don't go anywhere else and glean. You can glean here in my field. Watch which field they reap in and then follow them. Have I not charged the young men not to molest you? So he's, he's going out of his way now to make sure she doesn't get hurt, to make sure that she has some food. Why is Boaz, the richest man in the county, all of a sudden showing her favor? Well, I think it goes all the way back to her faithfulness to stay with her mother-in-law. Let me, let me tell you a secret. If you will be faithful it will release the favor of God in your life. I don't know about you, but I love favor. I love it when people do things for me and there's no real reason why they do it for me and they're doing it for me and they're not doing it for anybody else. It's just favor. And I believe it's connected to our relationship with God. If you're faithful in little things, God will give you favor that will leave you in shock. And when you're thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should notice me since I am a foreigner? And Boaz said to her, I've been made fully aware of all that you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. 
and how you've left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and have come to a people unknown to you before now. The Lord recompense you, and that word means reward. The Lord reward you for what you have done, and a full reward be given to you by God, the God of Israel under whose wings you have come to take refuge. I'm, I'm taking a little time to read this because I'm going to get to something here that I love. Then she said, well, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken to my heart, spoken to the heart of your maiden servant, though I am not one of your own maid servants. And at mealtime, he told her to come and eat with them. And so he just kept blessing her and blessing her and blessing her. But verse 16, I love verse 16. He went to his workers and he said to them, well, let's read verse 15. And when she got up to glean, Boaz ordered his young men, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. So now he's making special arrangements for her to be able to go in a part of the field that other people can't go to. And let some handfuls, and let fall some handfuls for her on purpose. And let them be there for her to glean and do not rebuke her. Here's what I want to say to you tonight. If you will be faithful to God, especially when nobody's looking and especially in little things, even while you're in the times of faithfulness before your harvest, you may not be getting everything you want, but God in your life all along your path will leave little handfuls on purpose for you. You know what I mean by that? Little winks from God just to let you know he's here. I personally enjoy that in my relationship with God probably as much as I do anything. It's just God just doing little things for me that just keep me encouraged, that just keep me going. One day last week, my daughter sent me uh, a picture of a phone cover she ordered me. She said, hey, Mom, I saw this online, and I just wanted to tell you I bought it for you. I hope you like it. And she ordered me this phone cover that just says, I love you, Mom. Well, I was like, thank you, Lord, for that wink. You know, God is encouraging us through people. He's doing things for us through people. But you know what my fear is? That we don't pay any attention to the little things that God does. We're so focused on this big thing that's not happening yet that we don't see all the little things that God does for you. And I want you to begin to watch in your life for the handfuls on purpose that God leaves along your path, the favor that he gives you that I believe is directly connected to our faithfulness, our level of integrity, and keeping our commitments to God. Can somebody give God a praise? We hope you enjoyed this teaching. To get more from Joyce, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.